Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're doing a revision exercise of grade 9 work covering triangles. Now what does the rule for triangles say? It says that the angles of a triangle, if I add them, equal to 180 degrees. How do we apply this? Remember with geometry, you have to give a reason. So if I write x plus y plus z is equal to 180 degrees, I must say, why am I saying that? Why am I making the statement? Why am I saying it's equal to 180 degrees? Now, how do we apply this rule? Let us take the following triangle. I know that 80 plus 50 plus x is equal to 180 degrees. Why? Sum of angles of a triangle. That means now I can solve and x is equal to 180 minus 50 minus 80. So x is equal to 180 degrees minus 50 minus 80, giving me x is equal to 50 degrees. Now if both of them are 50 degrees, you can tell me that this is an isosceles triangle, which means equal angles, equal sides, two equal sides equals to two equal angles. Let's take the next one. We've got 100 plus 50 plus x is equal to 180 degrees. Reason, sum of angles of a triangle. Then I have x is equal to 30 degrees. This is on your basic solve for x. If you are not familiar with that, you have to go back to your videos under solving for x and algebraic expression where you do factorizing before solving for x. Let's go to the next thing in triangles. The next rule you have is that the exterior angle, which exterior means outside angle, is equal to the interior opposite. Right, so what are they saying? They are saying that if I take angle A plus angle B, it will equal to angle C1. Exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. This reason seems long you have to write it. No matter what, you have to write the reasoning down. Let's say I am telling you that this is 150 degrees. Now what do I know? I know that x plus 40 is going to equal to 150 degrees. Why? Exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite. Right. That means now I can solve. I made a statement and I gave a valid reason. So I have x is equal to 110 degrees. Okay, let us look at the information. It tells us that a is equal to 50, p is equal to b. And you'll see there's a few things there. Now, start always with the easiest thing. The thing you know is a triangle. You know that the sum of angles of a triangle equal to 180 degrees. So working with my triangle, I have that angle A plus angle B plus angle C3 because I'm only working with this chunk is equal to 180 degrees. But as soon as I make a statement, I need to say why do I feel that? So it's sum of angles of a triangle. Now if I substitute A was 50 degrees, B is equal to P plus C3 is equal to 50 degrees which is equal to 180 degrees. Now once you made the statement, afterwards your calculation, you don't need to keep on putting a statement. Now you solve for x, you're going to have p is equal to 180 degrees minus 50 degrees minus 50 degrees, which means p is equal to 80 degrees. Now that is your normal standard solve for x, solve for unknowns. If you're not familiar with this, you need to go back to your algebraic expressions, back to your factorizing, and then back to your solve for x before you are fine with this. Now once we have that, what can we see? We can see a straight line, we can see an exterior angle of a triangle. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can say R plus 40 is equal to A plus B. Why? Exterior angles of a triangle. You could have also said that C3 plus C2 is equal to 180 degrees and your reason would be adjacent supplementary or angles on a straight line, whichever you are comfortable with. Now, R plus 40 is going to equal to A is 50 degrees, 
and B is 80 degrees as we've calculated before. So that means R plus 40 is going to equal to 130 degrees. R is going to equal to 130 minus 40 degrees which means R is equal to 90 degrees. So here we know that this R value is equal to 90 degrees. Now what is interesting you see a lot of children see these things as vertically opposite. So when I'm talking of the vertically opposite children see this angle and this angle is vertically opposite but it is not. To be vertically opposite it must be made by two straight lines. Can you see the straight line is here there is no such line. This line is definitely not straight. So be careful there is no vertically opposite. Now how do I calculate the value of C4? We can't solve for C1 or C4 because there is no other information. But later after I do parallel lines you're going to see the same drawing and this is going to be parallel line. So we are going to redo this drawing or continue this drawing after we solve for parallel lines. So in our next video we're going to discuss parallel lines and then we'll come back to this equation and you'll see how we solve for this part. So basically we'll solve for C4 and C1 after we do that. You cannot say they're vertically opposite. You can't solve for adjacent supplementary because these are not straight lines. And here even though there is a straight line there's not enough information to solve it. So we'll redo this or we'll continue with this in the video where we're doing parallel lines. Thank you for watching.